What's up everybody, this is Marcus, your MTT coach of the Academy of Poker with today's video and we will do a hand review today. Um, we've done some before so and yeah it was quite liked so we will continue with that. Uh, you can take away quite a lot of things here and um, yeah whenever you have any questions always put them down in the comments. Um, as always make sure to leave a like for the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all our social media to not miss out on any updates from us and yeah let's jump into the hand directly hi guys my name is marcus i'm an mtt coach of the academy of poker and we have a great offer for you our current academy of poker course will only cost you 200 euros but if you do it the right way you can even get it for free all you have to do is hit the link in the description below get in contact with our managers and you can start right away and now enjoy the upcoming video we have a yeah, button versus small blind situation for the day. Uh, Queen 10 offsuit will be raised by us. Uh, we get flattered by the small blind. We also get flattered by the big blind, but he will leave on the flop. So this doesn't change the ranges too much. Uh, let's have a look at our ranges first. So we start with like almost a 50 percent opening range out of uh out of 50 out of 40 big blinds that's the normal button range um when we're deeper we can open those pretty much all the suited connectors or suited hands as, uh, as well and here we yeah i think it's a pretty clear pretty clear um pretty clear open range as you see we do fold some of the really weak king x and uh yeah some of the non-suited connectors here as well like six five six seven six oh and stuff like that so we fold those and the small blind actually has not that big of a range because most of the hands would be three bet we have late positions so as you see the button range is pretty big so therefore the small blind three betting range should also be big and as you see all those hands that we would we will definitely play should be three bet here uh goes down until pocket tens even ten nine suited because it has really nice playability quite a lot of equity on a lot of flops so therefore we uh three bet this too um all the ones we see at like 50 percent should would be uh three bet bluffs or not would not always be uh just called here um not as bluffs but they are not like they have still good equity but they don't perform as well as those hands so we will not always use them but hands like this would be rather three bet bluffs because we will get a lot of direct folds pre-flop as well so why not use it right so we can make a um, directly plus ev um, decision for us and it will help us a lot and hands like nines and eights um they are pretty strong especially in late positions but um not always depending on the opponent it's a good thing to raise because he will call so much and with eights and nines you're gonna have a lot of overcards quite often so therefore those are not always three bets let's see a flop uh, you can already see it in the gto we got a king three four board we see two checks i continue for half the pot and the small blind calls you already see the turn but that doesn't matter because it's here as well uh so let's have a look um as we have it as default player one is checking at first and let's have a look at our range um we should be as you see here checking like two-thirds of the time actually um so for my whole range the bet is probably not the best but as you see it's like two-thirds checking one-third betting so it is not that like not that bad um anyway and if we have a look at the specific hand i'm holding the queen 10 with the queen of hearts and the 10 of spades we check it half the time about half the time so i bet at this time i should be checking it next time to balance it in some way so so far fairly standard as said for my whole range um like if i bet it now i should check it the next two times pretty much because uh, we have quite good like we will hit a, we can hit a lot of equity on the turn and river which is good for us also we keep our range pretty wide and we also keep the small blinds range fairly wide even though it is not that wide anyway um however this is like a gto situation so in general the small blind will probably uh defend a bit wider but of course we want to try to have the optimum in the game theory for us so that's why we're going for this so we bet half the pot uh we can have a look at the calling range here as well where he just flats um hand like all the top pairs would just be called pretty much he folds a lot of his ace high stuff as you see um here we call sometimes with a backdoor flush draw as well all the other ace highs will just be folded um some raising here as you see 
pretty much like yeah four out of ten times maybe half the time in average yeah pretty much close to half the time in average with uh, the gut shot here and also the same in a smaller way as you see just a little bit here you just have too much equity uh, to raise it uh, but with those hands bottom pair we can get a lot of immediate folds and um, therefore sometimes you can put a raise in there um, other than that you yeah you raise the sets of course because of the possible flush draw so that's just making sense and yeah still calling with an over with ace jack for example as you see not all the time it's like four to one roughly uh king jack off will be a call most of the time as you see there's some when you don't have a heart in the hand you raise it a bit more frequently than with it with a heart as you can see but yeah pretty much standard as we say let's uh, jump into the turn calculate it quickly and so now the thing is that he leads out for pot so you see roughly 15 bigs in the middle he leads out for exactly pot i'm sitting on yeah one point roughly 1.5 times pot here let's have a look what is uh gto suggesting on when to do it as you see uh pretty much never one percent out one percent one percent of the time gto will suggest that so again this was i'm not sure which kind of tournament this was probably it was like a freeze out a smaller freeze out mm, probably around 11 dollars or a bit smaller uh, but as you see we should the small blind should almost never bet out here as you see check pretty much 100 percent of the time with his uh with his mate flushed with his mate flushes never never try to bluff anything here and the only hands as you see like a small percentage of the queen queen of hearts which is not possible here because we held we held it in this situation but in general sometimes lead lead out big with when you have the second not flush draw um the only thing that is a happens is happening a bit more often is when you like one out of ten times an average uh that you lead out pot with your sets and pocket fours even more often than pocket threes because then it's more likely with pocket fours that your opponent has le at least has a three in his hands and especially as you see here with the three of hearts we always check even so it's only about uh if he could have the uh, three of hearts and as the four of hearts is already in the board we raise it more often because it is not in the game anymore so, or it's not available for the opponent and as you see sometimes sets and just a little little bit of nothing here but as you see not much we check pretty much all the range here however he does go for the pot bet and let's see what we do um in that regard it is good because it pretty much folds out everything for us as you see we even we should even fold uh Pretty much all the king x we have here 100 percent of the time only the king seven of spades should be called here sometimes but most of the time we we just fold so many of our king x so top pair hands and yeah of course all the garbage we still have in so all the yeah all the non non-made hands as you can see uh, but other than that let's have a look at our specific hand and we should call half of the time and we should just jam it half of the time so uh you could now think about what i did in this situation if i just called or not um if we think about me just calling then we have like uh 45 in the middle with me sitting on 20 25 big blinds so uh of course we say it's still it's still good still in a nice stack here i would say but it's getting then like the pot odds are or the stack to pot ratio is like really small only uh, yeah, not even a little bit above uh, 0 0.5, so it will be hard to get away, and we could be crushed already. Uh, even though, according to DGO, he shouldn't have flushes here often. Also, like if you just think about it logically, why would he ever be leave lead out pot here in this situation? Um, it just doesn't make sense because if he has the nuts here. And we are button versus small blind like what is he afraid of even if we have like a set of kings right now which is of course in our range but it's just highly unlikely since we are in the button and we raise so much it's not like we're sitting in utg here uh, so therefore what could make sense here in this situation is most likely like rather some two pair combinations uh so what we can see to what would be two pairs we can have a look at king jack here 
as you see, should still pretty much be checked all the time. Really small part that should bet, as you see, like, I mean, 10% roughly, uh, but then rather go for the half bot, half bot sizing than the big sizing. Uh, 3 4 is not in his range, for example. King 4 is not in his range. Uh, Jack 4 is not in his range. So it's pretty much down to King Jack or nothing in this situation, other than, of course, set of 4s, set of 3s could be. So it's like those combinations you have here, and it's down to 6 plus 3 plus 3. So it's 12 combinations. Um, and yeah, as you know, as you see, we are sitting with uh, no Penenda plus the flush draw, second nut flush draw. So. Uh, decision here is to jam it and then funny enough uh, he should be calling quite a bit here I mean of course it it does calculate with uh, a really small percentage of betting that uh, betting pot here but anyway he did it so uh, we see the call and of course like two pairs um, this is not possible in this case but as you see like all the like top pairs that block flush or have the flush draw as well here of course here the nut flush draw uh, and yeah sure all the flushes should be calling we got the funny enough even the king seven here should be a call two-thirds of the time um, but this should most likely be like a bluff catcher or exactly or pretty much for a hand that exactly that we have that we have that is the queen 10 with or maybe like something like ace queen ace 10 with the ace of hearts queen of hearts something like that because then it's a big draw but he he would still be he would still be ahead for now and as you can see other than that uh, just the flushes and the sets and we were talking about the sets and the two pairs uh finally uh we get the ace of hearts on the river so and he actually had the king jack for the two pair so that was the only thing that even according to uh gto would make sense uh, however just bet then like to lead out for half the pot not for full pot um just also because of the things that we will most likely jam those kinds of hands here and uh yeah he doesn't give him gives himself like a good stpr here so uh, i think interesting spot um let me know what you guys about the small blind play here uh, of course, like especially in lower limits, people are just afraid of flushes, flush draws or flush so often. Um, so actually, it could also be surprising that the only check called the flop with top pair here. Because he has a pretty good kicker in this situation. I definitely have more king X in my, uh, in my range. So even like a smaller king X, so he would be ahead here as well. And on the turn, the flush gets there already. So uh, when he then starts, uh, starts leading out pot, I'm not. I'm not sure if that's a good play. Uh, I would, with the picked up equity, I would definitely, I would mo most likely see bet here um, on the turn as well. And he could then check jam, for example. Uh, we still have more folds in this, um, and therefore, of course, as I said, like he folds out a lot of our garbage already when he just pots it. But I think he's missing out a lot of a, a lot of uh, chips and a lot of equity by uh, potting here because then he narrows our range down way too much. If we like the only thing we continue with is something like that either we already have to flush or we have a really really strong draw and that's it like of course we could have a set of four a set of threes as well so we have either we have like at least also two pair so that could be a thing where he might be lucky if we have i would open jack three jack four suited king three king four suited so that is a thing that is possible but other than that we have uh strong two pairs we have sets uh and really strong draws like this open ender or the nut flush draw with a gut shot as said like ace 10 ace queen could also be a thing here so yeah um not sure i like it too much um because yeah he's missing out a lot of equity but as said let me know what you think guys um what do you've played it in a different way would you like as you see we check two-thirds of the time on the flop here ourselves uh in my opinion i thought that it's a good thing like if we have the queen of hearts we have like a um, first of all, like we have good equity for turns and rivers because we have two strong backdoor draws on any heart, um, any Broadway is really good for us. And yeah, therefore um, a lot of a lot of the kings would also be checked, and there's not that many king eggs that he just flats on the small blind. Like he's probably folding king eight off, uh, king seven off. He might be flatting king nine suited, king eight suited, 
uh, but not that many king x. Uh, so we get an immediate fold. And as I said, a lot of the time we will not get raised here as well. So uh, then we can get a turn. And most likely we'll also see a river if we need to. Because of course the jack of hearts is pretty much the, the jackpot card for us in this situation. So those two cards were pretty the best the best two cards we could get. Like if I have the ace of hearts on the turn, it would have probably ended up the same here. Uh, actually not because then you would check of course. But uh, I mean, for me, it would still be like the best, like one of the two best cards here. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. As I said, let me know in the comments. Uh, leave any crit critics, leave any suggestions. Uh, if you have a hand I should analyze, let me know as well. You can just leave a comment and then we, uh, you can send me the hand via email or something like that. Uh, more than happy to do that, as you know. We're, we're doing the coachings here, so you can see what skills I have in analyzing hands and talking about the hands. And yeah, if you want to if you want to then maybe get into more individual coachings, also uh, let us know. More than, uh, more than happy to do that, to get in touch with you guys, uh, to have more people added to our Academy of Poker. But yeah, other than that, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, good luck at the tables. Enjoy the day and see you in the next video. Ciao.